The range of terrorist-related attacks during the past year, including the use of vehicle ramming, edged weapons tactics, and active shooters continue to evolve. Online radicalization and mobilization to violence also continue to rise. The threat of terrorist attacks represents a persistent challenge for the Army. The Army's prevention and response activities to counter this threat align with the Chief of Staff of the Army's priorities of readiness, future Army, and take care of the troops. Our interview today is with Major General David Glazer. General Glazer is a career military police officer who served as the Department of the Army's anti-terrorism branch chief during the 9-11 attacks and is currently serving as the Provost Marshal General of the Army. General, we're here to discuss Army anti-terrorism awareness. Could you comment on some of the Army's ongoing anti-terrorism efforts? Now, during the past several years, the Army has implemented a wide range of anti-terrorism awareness initiatives. Quarterly awareness themes, community outreach efforts with our families and retired soldiers, and other enhanced awareness efforts, such as the risk associated with social media and unmanned aircraft systems. You know, I'm pleased to report that we are continuing these critical initiatives, which are focused on readiness and protection at the local level. Anti-terrorism awareness represents all the activities we execute in our installations, standalone facilities, and forward with operational forces to deter and detect terrorist activities. As the Provost Marshal General, I'm committed to enhancing our protection capabilities against the terrorist threats both in the homeland and overseas. How do the Army's anti-terrorism awareness focus areas nest within the Chief of Staff of the Army's priorities? The three anti-terrorism focus areas are recognize and report suspicious activity, which equates to taking care of the troops, Understand the threat associated with violent extremism, which gets at the Ready Army, and educate the Army community on the rules associated with ownership and use of unmanned aircraft systems, which equates to looking after the future Army. So the first focus area, it is everyone's responsibility to recognize and report suspicious activity. Let me give you a couple examples. You may have heard of the Fort Dix Six. The Fort Dix Six were arrested on 7 May 2007 for planning an attack on Fort Dix, New Jersey. The attack was prevented because an alert Circuit City clerk informed the FBI that an individual brought a video to the store to be duplicated into a DVD. Now that DVD depicted the conduct that the clerk described as disturbing, where there were 10 young men at a firing range calling jihad and shouting Allah Akbar. Another example would be a plot which was formulated by Army Private First Class Nasser Jason Abdo, where he decided that he was going to bomb a restaurant frequented by Fort Hood soldiers. Now the attack was prevented because a local gun store owner called police after PFC Abdo visited the store to buy ammunition and gunpowder and told the police he looked suspicious. Let me move on to the second focus area, which is understanding the threat associated with violent extremism from outside and within our communities and families, and how you recognize that. So here's an example. Sergeant John Booker was planning to detonate a car bomb on Fort Riley in support of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. Now the attack was prevented because an alert individual noticed a Facebook posting from Sergeant Booker declaring that he was ready to be killed in jihad. Now, the individual notified the FBI, and a sting operation was put in place, which ended this threat. The third focus area I want to describe is educating the Army community on possible future threats. Now, this type of threat that's emerging is the threat of unmanned aircraft systems. In April of 2017, open source media reported an ISIS unmanned aircraft system attacked Iraqi troops by dropping explosives on units operating in and around Mosul. And while this TTP has not been utilized in Western countries, the capability and desire to export this TTP does exist. Now it is incumbent on everyone to report UAS activities, especially suspicious UAS activities around facilities and installations. How can viewers obtain more information about anti-terrorism awareness and protecting themselves and their families? First, I'd encourage everybody to reach out to the anti-terrorism officers or anti-terrorism coordinators 
who have a lot of resources at their disposal to educate and assist our community members and organizations. Next, I'll encourage them to go online and take the anti-terrorism awareness training, especially prior to overseas travel. Third, use the Army Anti-Terrorism Enterprise Portal to download anti-terrorism awareness materials and guidance as references. And finally, reach out to the local family readiness groups who can share anti-terrorism awareness information with all those who participate. General, thanks for your time. Is there anything else you'd like to say in closing? Thanks for giving me this, this opportunity. There are a couple points that, uh, four points specifically, that I'd like to make as we, as we wrap this up. The first priority is to prevent an attack and protect our military, families, and our civilian personnel. Now we do this by focusing on the three key themes. First is to recognize and report suspicious activity. Second is to understand the threat of violent extremism in our communities. And the third is to educate our communities on the future threats. And by doing this, we help the Chief of Staff of the Army take care of our troops, be ready to fight today, and plan for our future Army. And we must instill this mindset that every person is a censor, and that if you see something suspicious, that you need to report it. Report it to the military police or local law enforcement. Lastly, I want to personally thank our first responders and others who work 24-7, 365 days a year to protect our Army. Always ready, always alert. Thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today.